Yeah. Can I go and ask? I think of the resolution. Rehabilitation ought to be valued over retribution in the interest of criminal justice system. Under my definitions, I can see these definitions. RA. No specific type of retribution or rehabilitation is specified. 2. Because of the rhetoric of the resolution, NEG doesn't have to defend or prove retribution. AF has the burden of proof. Value morality. Choice. It's only when people have possible alternatives to their actions that we conclude those actions are either morally good or morally bad. If we didn't have an alternative, then none of us have a, any real choice in what we do, and therefore cannot be held morally accountable for our actions. Criterion deontology. Deontology focuses on the intent of the action. We examine the inherent nature of the act in terms of ethical principles. Since these principles are central to this approach, it is important to consider them carefully. Many of these principles are enunciated in religious traditions. Philosophers such as Immanuel Kant believe that they could be derived from pure logic or from natural law. Fundamental principles which many traditions agree on include what I want everyone to act in this way does this action represent everyone's rights, especially the right to make their own decisions, not be to be manipulated or exploited in any way. Was this decision made in a proper way with everyone having appropriate input? The ontology good morality. The ontology morality maximizes good to its fullest extent while utilitarianism is indifferent to distribution of good. Freeman 94. It's perhaps a moral truism to say that people ought to do what they can to make the world a good a place as possible. So as far as they do, it appears consequentialist at least, that they are committed to the indefensible idea that morality requires us to do less good than we are able to do. Rawls' deontological distinction is different. A standard objection to utilitarianism is that they are indifferent to the distribution of good. This is purportedly a necessary feature of such views since they define right and justice as what maximizes overall or aggregate good. Convention 1, Neoliberalism. Behavior management plans and correctional institutions replicate the disciplinary economy in bar society. BMPs are designed to intervene at the level of a resident social life for shaping a social relationship, sociality, and to modify it to fall within the accepted norms of society. BMPs rely on an economy of exchange, so this is a particular kind of neoliberalism, dominant ideology governing our BMPs. BMPs look beyond forensics as the stated goal is to improve reintegration. Biopolitical logic, where individuals are seduced into seeing themselves as human capital within a system that calculates, quantifies, and otherwise measures all manner of human relationships according to the terminology of free market. Hegemonic theory of consumption is presumed, and criminal activity is redefined as an investment where profit is hoped for. Neoliberal discourse is dehumanizing, eliminating critical rhetoric for issues such as racial justice and freedom. This way of thinking leads to rampant racism and also destroys the value of debate. Grow 5. Within neoliberalism, democracy becomes synonymous with free markets, while equality, racial justice, and freedom are stripped of any meaning, and used to disparage those who suffer systematic deprivation and chronic punishment. The media provide politicians to remind us to reinforce the central neoliberal tenet the problems are private rather than social. And its appeals to universal laws, neutrality, and neoliberalism eliminates the very critical thinking without which debate becomes impossible. Convention 2, vile power. Rehabilitation, civil rights, citizen-centered, and economic discourse are all efforts of neoliberal biopower to gain complicit workers. This system bases itself around power, the power to subjugate, punish, and control. There is always the acceptance of racial, gender, and nationalized society. It justifies the killing and devaluation of life in order to justify its own existence. Sam Beck 12. Global lockdown naturalizes but also produces capitalist, racial, gender, national, and sexual formations. Its technologies function as sites for ontological production. These techniques of disciplining, subjugating, or relegating, regulating, and controlling both bodies and populations constitute a biopower that signals the end of sovereignty based on the power of death and the transition towards the liberal art of government that has its primary end, the market management of life. The move towards a society of control relies on particular forms of power to relegate, conform, correct, and reform a of behavior to should be related internally to the historical trajectory of capitalist de development. Partiality biopower aims to produce these radicalized, feminized, and impoverished bodies as subject and remove them from the public sphere. Ideals to foster the projection of a living subject that conforms to the jurisdictional and ethical imperatives of neoliberalism with the expression of the discourse of human rights, citizenship, or the economy. Contention 3, the U.S. criminal justice system is racist. Racism is extremely prevalent in the U.S. criminal justice system, quickly 10. Whites and blacks engage in drug offenses at comparable rates, while African Americans comprise 13% of the U.S. population, 14% of monthly drug users, they are 37% of the people arrested for drug offenses. That's a moral side constraint. Reject racism in every instance. Memory 99. The struggle against racism will be long and difficult, yet for this very reason, the struggle will be undertaken without increasing concessions. One cannot be indulgent towards racism. To give it a foothold means to augment the beast of heart mess in other people, which is to diminish what is human. To accept the racist universe to the highest degree is to endorse fear, injustice, and violence. To connect oneself morally is the condition for the establishment of human order. Racism is the very negation. The views of racism is the condition for all theoretical and practical morality. To be clear, because neoliberalism is dehumanizing, and this is an immoral act, so by deontology, rehab can never be okay. I prove that rehab creates neoliberalism by this idea of changing the way people think. This is immoral. Reject AF. On my opponent's case, his first, the first thing he says is these objections about misdemeanors, which are prison sentences that are under a year. Um, these should be looked for. However, this cannot be taken into consideration if the, uh, dehumanization is occurring in this system 
because if dehumanization is occurring through the impacts of neoliberalism, biopower, and racism, uh, the societal welfare cannot be taken into consideration because through morality is not being accessed. On to his second observation, I can see this. Um, his third observation, and his uh, his third observation is that you need to value retribution over, and it has to it doesn't have to advocate uh, for retribution, but I have to uh, defend retribution as I stated in my RA. Uh, this should be carried across the flow that this is a direct rebuttal to that. As to my his value of societal welfare. This should ideally be taken, uh, this sh ideally should be valued. However, through dehumanization, the impacts of neoliberalism, biopower, and racism, uh, society is not uh, achieving the common good because people aren't being benefited from rehabilitation. Um, as to his criterion of uh, political efficiency, uh, again, cross apply my argument to his value to this. Um, and his first contention about the reintegration is impossible. Um, reintegration is impossible because of the effects of neoliberalism and biopower because they're being turned into human capital. Um, because this dehumanization is occurring in our rehabilitative system, we can't look to this as a helping societal welfare and cross apply this to his subpoints under the first contention. As to his second contention of misdemeanors, they need to go back to society, so we need to reform these people. Uh, reforming them would help, but dehumanization is occurring through the impacts, so this is, in the end, not helping. Um, I now stand for cross-examination. Okay, so... The United States faced a really awkward predicament in 1994 with Rwanda, because we didn't want to violate their sovereignty, but we knew that there was a genocide going on. So, deontologically, we should not have intervened because we would be using the Rwandan people as a means to our own ends to achieve our foreign policy. Mm -hmm. So what do we do? Do we follow deontology and do nothing and let genocide occur? Because that still is an action in and of itself, because inaction itself does prescribe the action of not doing anything. Do we allow that to occur, or do we get over those moral qualms and go help those people? Through deontology, you would not help the people. But so you would, you would, but you would have, if you had to do that, so you were basically advocating that we would have to just sit by and watch those political harms happen, right? If you're taking a deontological perspective. Okay, so my question is, how can the government itself take a deontological perspective? Like, does the government ever, like, should the government ever be taking such a perspective? And yes, why? because you need to minimize the amount of immorality that's occurring. Okay, can you give me an example of an action that the United States government could take in any kind of policy that wouldn't use people as a means to an end? Could you clarify the question? All right, give me a, like, example of an action the government could do, like legislation, for instance, like healthcare or something like that, where it wouldn't violate deontology. Well, trying to put the community, or like, trying to make immorality not occur. I can't give you an example, just from my case, but... Okay. I'm just... All right, on the biopower, can we escape biopower? Well, through rehabilitation, we are accessing biopower. Yeah, but isn't it... Okay, can we ever... Like, even if we don't solve for, like, this and we have rehabilitation, is rehabilitation the only thing that drives biopower? Or is it other things like, I don't know, say, our healthcare system, our foreign policy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? There are probably other things, but we're debating... Okay, so how does your case uniquely solve for biopower if we're just looking to the criminal justice system. I'm saying that we should try and eliminate biopower in the... Okay, but does do you show anywhere in your case that eliminating bits and pieces of biopower are enough to overcome the system of biopower itself? I'm saying that because of deontology, we should diminish biopower. Okay. And any way we can do this is more immoral. So what are you talking about in your neoliberalism contention? I'm saying that rehabilitation is turning people into human capital. Okay, but what if the people submit to being human capital? Because you talk about the uh, the uh, beginning of your speech that we have to look to what the individuals like choose to do, right? Their ontological decisions. Yes. Okay. So what if the citizens themselves make the ontological decision to submit themselves to a government and therefore submitted themselves into the biopower? But the government still should not have that control over people. But they what? Uh, but what if people give them that control? Okay, but like rehabilitation, they're forced to conform to these ideas. They're not given a choice. Uh, to 
changed. Okay, so 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 the, it just happened one day. Like all of a sudden there was this giant political biopolitical state and they just went into it, or did they choose at some point to enter society? Um, biopower exists in the rehabilitative system because of the impacts. Okay, can I see your case? Yeah. I'm just gonna take all four minutes. Observation one, the only argument that she tries to make is she's going to be able to outweigh it on her impact, but this is non responsive to the actual argument that I'm making at the bottom, and more importantly, extending across Roberts at the bottom that talks about the perception of criminality and how we have to change our perception in order to actually evaluate the resolution in such a way that allows it to actually look to it. This has one impact around insofar as we're looking at misdemeanors. That means if her stuff is not specific to misdemeanors and is specific to prisons, that means it's non topical in this round, and also that you're going to give more weight to evidence that's more specific to misdemeanors. Then go to observation two. Extend across observation two, and this is important insofar as I just say it has to be compared. That means I don't have to be a perfect world. That means biopower and that other kind of stuff can exist in my world as long as. I at least am able to achieve my own societal good and my own social, my own value criteria, and then go to observation three. The only argument that she tries to make is she tries to directly cross the level, but the problem is you can't just advocate that something is wrong and inherently say that we don't really have to be able to fix it. She has to be able to at least give some sort of converse, and this allows for me to at least have some sort of ground to attack. Otherwise, she becomes a moving target, really doesn't have to be able to defend anything and just bring out inherent flaws in the system that will never actually be able to be corrected. Then go to the value of uh, societal welfare. She said that it's not going to be able to be achieved insofar as we actually look to the, all the other kind of problems, but the problem is that we can't look to all those other kind of things about biopolitical control because we have to actually look at how society would function. She doesn't attack the stuff under value creation. She talks about how we are fearful creatures. We submit ourselves to the collective in the first place. Like this is an inherent turn on her because if she says we have to look to moral worth, that means we're looking to societal welfare insofar as the people themselves decided to give themselves to the government and allow themselves to be under biopolitical control insofar as they want to protect themselves because we are fearful creatures. Then you go to the value criteria. The value criteria is almost non like not even responded to. Like extend across the stuff that it talks about more detail. This is the most thing. Like more detail is directly talking about what she her entire case is saying is that when Morgan Thau says that we have to look to what the political efficiency is, it's saying that there are things like the individual moral proportion, there is biopower, but the problem is the state can't look to this. And you can extend across the analysis about the difference between individuals and the state. This means that anything about the individuals like trying to defeat biopower is totally individual. That means that it's done through the individual, which makes the entire NC non-topical, and it makes my resolution more topical. Now let's go to the op contention one. This is not responsive to any of the arguments. All she says is that it's going to be turning people into human capital. But the problem is, insofar as she has to look to her part of the resolution, she's still going to be violating that just as much as I am. And you can extend across all the offense that I get out of this, specifically first, that it is key for our perception to be able to actually see these people, and we have to be able to rehabilitate their perception. Two, that it's just going to re-entrench crime because they're going to be pushed into an illegal economy. And three, that it's going to entrench poverty insofar as many people in a single community will be able to actually go into the system. So let's go to contention two. The only argument that is making against contention two is essentially that it doesn't really matter again because of biopolitical control. But the Again, this is non-responsive to the argument that I'm making. That first of all, that this is a perception argument, extend across the fact that it's just going to be better, and in the end, we're going to be able to save more money. Let's go to the AC and see. So. First on the resolution analysis, go to two. Cross my arguments about the here. She just can't advocate for something or else she's going to lead to inaction. That's going to lead to bad things in so far as the morning foul is directly cross applying the fact that we have to be looking to what we should do. And inaction itself is still going to lead to those big bad consequences. If she acts deontologically, she has to be able to put up with the consequences of many criminals running rampant and stuff like that as well. Then three, turn a rational decision thing. If the rational decisions are what's going to be important, that means that these, the people are decided to actually consent themselves to the government insofar as they do that. That means they're going to be going to political efficiency and they don't care about biopolitical power under Kyra and NC really doesn't have any impact in the round. Then go to revalue uh, criterion, sorry. Deontology leads to inaction, but inaction in and out of itself is still an action. Cross apply my example that I gave in cross examination about Rwanda. The idea is the United States was put into a deontological situation where it tried to not intervene, but this led to genocide. And you can cross apply the analysis about more now how these things can still exist, but the problem is we can't let them get in the way of our unsuccessful political action, or else we allow for bad things to happen. We try to justify it. Like, here's how you're going to group the entire NC. Like, Actually, except the bottom. Go to contention three real quick before, and then we're going to contend group one, contention one and three. First, contention three. Like, this is non unique. Racism is still going to be able to exist. She just says it's going to be completely like in the United States criminal justice system. But if you affirm the resolution, it's not going to make any difference than if you negated the resolution because an action is still action. So it's going to be still having those kind of racism in her system, and she's still bound to that. Now let's go to contention one and two. Like, cross apply contention one and two. Like, this is entirely how it works. Like, biopolitical control and neo capitalism, one, falls insofar as people consent themselves to it, so it doesn't matter, and it's an impact turn right there. Two, we have to really realize that inherently that we can't solve these things to the individual levels, which means it's non-topical. And three, on top of that, we have to realize that biopower and neopolitical control still will happen in her world. And that's worse for her to violate than for me to violate. Okay. 
128 remaining. All right, you can stop right. 